turkey burgers, ground white meat turkey. I found this is a great option um, for those that don't eat eggs. My husband is a guy that absolutely hates eggs, won't eat them, won't touch them. So what do I make him for breakfast? So I, I make him little turkey patties for breakfast and he has that instead. Um, it also makes a really nice um, chili, ground white meat turkey chili. And that's great because all you need in there really is, is your turkey, ground turkey and some red kidney beans and some chopped up onions and Fred Meyer even sells a little spice packet. If you're not a big spice person, you don't know how to make chili, there's the, the packet, you can get the packet, but use the ground uh, white meat turkey instead. And there you've got your low uh, fat meat and your beans. And beans are great because they're high in fiber. Also lunch, you want to think beyond the sandwich. Um, you want to start trying to reduce the amount of carbohydrates you're eating. Um, vegetables, make sure you get in at least one big salad a day and get as many vegetables in there as possible. Um, you can throw uh, some beans in your salads. It's another way to up the protein. And things like soups and stews um, are a great way to, to get beyond sandwiches. Um, with your salads, you can also bring uh, tuna or salmon or tofu or beans and add a little protein in with your um, uh, salads. Uh, you want to watch the avocados. Avocados, one sixth of an avocado is a serving of oil. So <laughs> if you eat half a half a avocado, that's quite a bit of oil. Even though it's good fats it's still fats. And the interesting thing about fats is that it's three times as many calories per gram as carbohydrates or protein. So protein and carbohydrates are basic three calories per gram. Fats are nine calories per gram. So even good fats can bump up the calories you're taking in in your day. So even if you're thinking, well, nuts, nuts are good for me. And so I'll, I'll sit down and eat, you know, a handful of nuts. Well, about eight pecans is a serving of nuts. About 12 almonds is a serving of nuts. If you start going beyond that, then you start um, increasing the fat. So things like snacks, uh, rye crackers with nut butter, and try a bunch of different kinds of but nut butters. Don't just stick with peanut. You know, um, Trader Joe's is a great place for nuts and for nut butters and you can try different kinds. Here in the Northwest, we're lucky we have hazelnuts, so we can get hazelnut butter, and there's almond butter, and a number of different kinds of butters. Um, plain yogurt, you can get used to eating plain yogurt. Um, now they have a lot of yogurts that are coming in smaller sizes, and a lot of them are coming with added good guy bacteria in them. So you have your Activia and all of these Dan Active and all these things. A lot of them will have some sugar in it. Um, but I think if you keep this, the small portion size and the, and the good bacteria probably outweigh the, you know, the amount of sugar that's in there. Um, another thing is two uh, mozzarella sticks, the string cheese, low fat string cheese, two of those is a serving of protein. So that's a great snack to have. Um, dips, dips for cut up vegetables are great. Um, hummus, um, tofu, there's a lot of different options now. You know, br browse through even Fred Meyer's nutrition section and see what they have. See what they have in the, in, and go down to Whole Foods once in a while and see what kinds of things they have. Um, and it's good to have a little protein snack before bed, especially for kids. Kids that you have a hard time waking up in the morning or may, may even have trouble with wetting the bed, sometimes it's that their blood sugar is dropping so low before they wake up in the morning that it's hard for their brain to wake up. Um, so giving them a little bit of protein snack before bed sometimes will help them make it through the night. Um, it's also good for people that tend to have problems with blood sugar that are diabetic or are on, on diabetic medications. It's important to have a little bit of, of protein snack before bed because if you drop your blood sugar in the middle of the night, your body will release insulin. And then when you go to do your reading in the morning, um, you actually it'll release insulin, but also you can break down the sugar in your liver from glycogen and you release this 
energy, this sugar, because your blood sugar dropped. Then when you take your reading in the morning, your blood sugar looks like it's high. And it's actually because your liver has released some sugar, not that you ate too much the night before. It's that you didn't eat a snack before bed to help stabilize your blood sugar all the way through. Again, from 7 o'clock at night to 7 in the morning. Raw vegetables. I've started doing cut up raw vegetables with hummus and putting it out instead of chips and dip when my friends come. And you know what? They eat it. They sit there and we're talking and just like you were gra grabbing the chips and scooping up that high fat dip, they're all sitting there with their carrots, dipping it in the hummus and chewing on it. You know, it's something crunchy while you're talking. So eating a large meal right before bed is probably not a good idea. It's probably better to do like the Europeans do, have a larger meal in the middle of the day and then a light meal at dinner time. Um, a mashed white potato has the same glycemic index as a slice of Wonder Bread. So glycemic index again is that how fast things turn to sugar. So Idaho potatoes that are mashed up turn to sugar really quickly. So you're much better off doing sweet potatoes or yams or Yukon Gold potatoes because they have a lower glycemic index. Try to do them baked and try to make sure you're eating the skins as well as the insides. Um, and that will give you more protein, more fiber, more minerals and will be slower to turn to sugar um, than mashed potatoes. Now, for those of you that may struggle with a lot of joint pain, yeah? Oh, just on the potatoes, what about just the brown, the brown potatoes? Like, um, they're not white, they're not the uh, Yukon gold, they're just... You mean like the big baking potatoes, like Idaho potatoes? Those are still considered white potatoes because they're white on the inside. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. On the outside. No, no, any of the big Idaho potatoes or baking potatoes, um, they actually, when you cut them open, they're white. When you cut open a Yukon Gold potato, it's actually gold color inside. So Yukon Gold is okay. Yukon Gold is okay for, for glycemic index. And actually, the the um, yams and the sweet potatoes are a different family. They're not even the same potato family as white potatoes. So people that tend to have problems with joint pain, the nightshades, which are tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, and eggplants, often will increase joint pain and stiffness and so you want to try and avoid those and one of the things you can do is substitute a sweet potato or a yam instead of your white potatoes. What about the red potatoes? The new potatoes, again if you cut them open and they're white inside they're going to... The red, the red ones are fine too. Anything that's not white. Not white. Yeah, if you're lucky to go to Hawaii and you cut them open, they have purple potatoes that are purple on the inside which are really interesting. <laughs> And again, good fats, you need fats to joint, lubricate your joints and to keep your body healthy. And, and especially the fish oils are essential for cardiovascular health. Um, so fish oils are something you want to try and get through your diet. Luckily here in the Northwest, especially this time of year and hopefully this season, the silver salmon are running the coho are running and so you should be able to get some really nice salmon which is high in those good essential fatty oils. Um, if you're not a big fish person then you probably should be supplementing your diet with, with uh, fish oils. Um, but for cooking olive oil or peanut oil are the best choices because they're resistant to breaking down with heat. And flax oil is actually a really good choice for salad dressings because that gives you some of the good fats. So when you want to go out, you want to learn what the low-fat menu terms are. You want to try and stay with things that are poached or steamed or stir-fried as opposed to all those wonderful high-fat terms like Alfredo and double crust and breaded and creamed and scalloped. <laughs> all of that again is, is adding a lot more calories. So if you, if you have an option of having a cream sauce or a tomato-based sauce, Choose the tomato-based sauce or choose the vegetable-based sauce. <laughs>